Today I'm going to be talking about the teaching process and what all of that entails. So to start off, you've got uh, your lesson plans. You've got to prepare your lessons. And in your preparation of a lesson, there's training objectives of that and standards that you're going to have to follow. Uh, there's two types of objectives. You're going to have your performance-based and then your decision-based models. On your performance base, it's going to be more of exactly what you need to do in each particular lesson. And then your decision based is going to be your thought process of how you got there. It's more of your, uh, it's more of a dynamic training environment. And it's uh, where you're going to focus more on your ADM, your aeronautical decision making skills. <clears throat> on your performance based objectives, you want to make sure that you're setting these measurable standards, reasonable, make sure it's not too hard, and then you want to uh, detail out your desired outcome of the performance that your student's going to give you in these performance-based objectives. You're going to make sure that you give a description of the skill or behavior that you're going to start out with, and then you're going to have the conditions that are uh, needed to meet this so that's going to basically be your set of rules that you're going to have for uh, this training objective and then you're going to have the criteria so what does a successful completion of this training look like this is what it is There's, there should be a question at the end of it what a uh, successful outcome is and then you got your, your decision based objectives and again, that's talking about your uh, judgment making skills, your decision making, uh, your ADM. And this is going to, uh, you set this up, you want to provide your student with a better understanding of the big picture when you're doing decision based training. And uh, how you're going to organize the material is you need to formulate a plan of action that's going to lead your students through this in a logical manner. So you're going to start out with your introduction and you have an attention grabber so this is the time when you want to say something that is maybe off the wall. Um, you could show a video just something that is really going to grab the attention of the student, the person who's trying to learn this. And then uh, the motivation element, you want to explain exactly why is this important for you to learn, what do you need this for. And uh, your overview is also going to be part of that um, logical setup of how things are going to happen. So you're going to say, you know, this is what we're going to cover. Here's your roadmap to get you to where we're going to be at the end of this lesson. Now let's talk about development. So when you're uh, talking about development, you want to go from past to the present and then simple to complex, known to unknown, and what you're using the most to what you're using the least. And um, that's just the elements of how you're going to teach anything. You can't come to the table with uh, advanced aerodynamics on your first flight lesson. So just kind of furthering the point of you got to start with your unknowns and or you got to start with your knowns and then move to your unknowns in the teaching process. And then you're going to have your conclusion. You're going to, at the conclusion, you need to ask questions that are going to reinforce the student's learning. And uh, you need to reiterate things that you specifically want your student to retain in this instance. New ideas are uh, not to be introduced at this time because this is just going to lead to the student being more confused than they would be in the first place. Now let's talk about different uh, delivery methods, different training deliveries. So you've got your lecture method, which is going to be um, similar to this right here actually. So I'm doing all the talking, there's nobody else uh, giving me any, in, any input in real time. I'm not able to really gauge what you are understanding or not understanding in this uh, format. And then you've got your teaching lecture. So in teaching lecture, you're gonna be really paying attention to what your students are doing. You're picking up on their attitudes. Um, are they taking notes? Do they seem to be nodding off? 
what's going on in the classroom or in the uh, the teaching environment at this time is what's what you're paying attention to in the teaching lecture method. <clears throat> and um, when you prepare your teaching lecture, it's pretty similar to everything else with uh, having a logical manner of how things work. So you want to have your objectives and your desired outcomes coming up first. You want to uh, research the subject before you get together with this and you want to organize your material in that logical manner like we were talking about. And finally, you want to plan productive classroom activities that are going to engage the students. Um, when you're teaching, it's important to use suitable language. If you um, are using simple words that are easier to understand, you're going to be more successful. And make sure you're um, not misspelling things or using any vulgarisms because that's really just going to discredit you as the teacher in this instance. And uh, let's talk about the different types of delivery that you can have. So you can read from a typed or written manuscript. So it would be essentially just you know, reading off a piece of paper, PowerPoints, or like this. Um, or you can recite memorized material. So you could uh, just have this speech made up in your head, and then really that's what you're teaching is uh, it's just recited. And another thing is uh, speaking extemporaneously from an outline. So kind of just having things set up and going off of that. Um, another way is you can just speak impromptu with no preparation whatsoever. Uh, we like to call that like a hip pocket class. Just pull it out of your pocket and teach it. And um, use of notes. So that's similar to what I'm doing right now. I'm using notes. I've got uh, my lesson plans right here in front of me and then I'm looking at things that are gonna jog my memory. Uh, to really bring together what I've got planned out for this lesson. So let's talk about uh, formal versus informal lectures. So an informal lecture is typically going to be more effective in uh, teaching your student and having them retain the information. It's going to let them actively participate. Nobody's going to be scared to talk out loud. And it's more of a... Uh, a uh, welcoming environment. Um, the formal is just the opposite of everything that I just said for the informal. So it's going to be, you know, raise your hand, get called on, really know your stuff in this situation. And uh, it's less likely for people to want to interact in a setting like that. The advantages and disadvantages of a lecture. So in a lecture, you've got a lot of information that you're kind of just shooting out there in a really short period of time and uh, which can be a good thing or a bad thing if you have a lot of information you have to get out there maybe a uh, lecture method is the best way to use and it can also be a disadvantage to where you uh, you may be wanting your student to really understand a particular topic but you can't because you're in a lecture base and you're giving them too much information like I'm saying, like I just said, it's a, it's not an effective method for retaining large amounts of information, and you may present more information than the student can actually absorb. So I'm just kind of reiterating that a little bit. The discussion method is where you're um, really just exchanging ideas, and that's something that could be very effective. It helps students recall their ability um, to use information in the future because they can remember that discussion that they had with you in times like that. The guided discussion method is where you really just want to have like an introductory to the discussion and then that kind of just kicks things off to let it progress with the, the students carrying on the, uh, the brunt of that discussion. And uh, it's really going to draw out what the students know about that topic. So it's, it's kind of to reiterate things to help them recall stuff. Um, if you are very skillful in your use of questions in this method, that's going to uh, lead to a lot of success. Another method of teaching is the computer-assisted learning. So um, 
with the coronavirus outbreak. That's what everybody's doing now, um, computer assisted learning. It's convenient. It can go at the student's pace. Um, you really kind of get out of computer assisted learning what you put into it. It's really all I've got on that. It's um, it's really convenient. The demonstration performance method, just like it sounds like, I demonstrate, you watch, you do, I observe. It's um, you're gonna watch me how to learn how you're gonna watch me show you how to do this skill, and then you're just gonna reproduce it. Um, there's five different phases of the demonstration performance method. You're going to have your explanation where I tell you exactly what it is that uh, that we're going to demonstrate. Then you're going to actually demonstrate that. You're going to watch the student perform. Then the instructor would be supervising to make sure that uh, it was performed the way it was taught. And then evaluation. So you would evaluate how the student performed that afterward after you've observed the student perform. Um, another method of teaching is going to be the drill and practice method. So that's really just getting out there and just like it sounds, you know, drilling, drilling that into you and just practicing over and over and over. Um, cause the things that are most often repeated are remembered the most. And then you've got, uh, your problem based teaching or problem based learning. Um, at this instance, you're going to confront students with problems in real life that's going to force them to uh, react with the world with a real world solution. So that's where you're coming out with uh, your practice and landings and all of a sudden, oh look, there's a coyote on the runway, let's do a go around. So going back to that, that problem, you got the problem with the coyote on the runway and you've got to have a real world solution which is to perform a proper go around. Types of problem-based instruction are going to be uh, scenario-based training, which is one of the best methods, um, just like the, the coyotes on the runway. So that would be a scenario-based training series. And then collaborative problem-solving, so where I'm uh, giving, as an instructor, I would give limited assistance to a student to kind of help them work through a problem not really given the entire answer, but you want to kind of lead them to the right place. And then uh, finally, the case study method, where this is your YouTube videos. Um, you can look up, you know, airplane crashes. This is what went wrong. It it's a really good teaching element because it it's real world proof of um, the consequences of misaction or just paying attention uh, you know most most accidents that happen in aviation are human error and there's lots of uh, case studies to prove it and finally we're going to talk about instructional aids and um, how we train so I, uh, I like to use a toy airplane as an instructional aid it really keeps it clear exactly what I'm talking about so you can point to the exact thing on the airplane that you might be talking about whether it's the flaps the ailerons landing gear cowling whatever it is you need to use to teach and the reason you want to do that is that it'll help gain the attention of your students and hold that attention and uh, this concludes my lesson on the teaching process